And if we don't start changing this trend line, we are going to lose the dollar and start to look like Iceland. Now, I got what you're thinking. This is going to happen when hell freezes over. But let me remind you, this December it did snow in Vegas. <laughs> Here's what happens if you don't address this stuff. So Japan had a fiscal and real estate crisis back in the late 80s. And its 225 largest companies today are worth one quarter of what they were 18 years ago. We don't fix this now. How would you like to see a Dow 3500 in 2026? Because that's the consequence of not dealing with this stuff. And unless if you want this person to become the CFO, not just of Florida, but the United States, we better deal with this stuff. That's the short term. That's the flame part. That's the financial crisis. Now, right behind the financial crisis, there's a second and bigger wave that we need to talk about. That wave is much larger, much more powerful, and that's, of course, the wave of technology. And what's really important in this stuff is, as we cut, we also have to grow. Among other things, because venture-backed startup companies are 0.02% of US GDP investment, and they're about 17.8% of output. It's groups like that in this room that generate the future of the US economy, and that's what we've got to be growing. We don't have to keep growing these bridges to nowhere. So let's bring a romance novelist into this conversation. And that's where these three trends come together. That's where the ability to engineer microbes, the ability to engineer tissues, and the ability to engineer robots begin to lead to a reboot. And let me recap some of the stuff you've seen. Craig Venter showed up here last year and showed you the first fully programmable cell that acts like hardware, where you can insert DNA and have it boot up as a different species. In parallel, the folks at MIT have been building a standard registry of biological parts. So think of it as a radio shack for biology. You can go out and get your proteins or your RNA or your DNA or whatever and start building stuff. In 2006, they brought together high school students and college students and started to build these little odd creatures. They just happened to be alive instead of circuit boards. Here's one of the first things they built. <laughs> so cells have this cycle. First they don't grow, then they grow exponentially, and then they stop growing. Graduate students wanted to find a way of telling which stage they were in. So they engineered these cells so that when they're growing in the exponential phase, they would smell like wintergreen. And when they stopped growing, they would smell like bananas. And you could tell very easily when your experiment was working and wasn't where it was in the phase. This got a little bit more complicated two years later. 21 countries came together, dozens